is the 2020 86 GT for tall drivers. My name is Aaron with Bigfoot Car Reviews. I'm 6'5", and today we're gonna find out. Thank you out. so much, Sean Newsom and Roger up at Valor Toyota here in Tulsa, Oklahoma for giving me the opportunity to look at this car for you. We have 17 inch wheels in the front and rear with ventilated disc brakes in the front and the rear as well. And it is a rear wheel drive front engine freaking blast to drive. The styling of the 86 GT is super simple. Just right here, starting on the driver's side, we have our 86 badge here. And then we have some arrow to arrow lines here with just really a vent that is not functional. And then riding right up here, we have our some more arrow channeling right here on the mirror. And then following all the back, all the way back, we have channel lines right here under the window and that run up into the rear fender and widen out on the hips there and give the 86 those wide awesome hips and then looking up on the roof we have a shark fin that honestly looks pretty freaking cool because this thing is small and tight and nimble and then we have bulges here on the roof. All right, so now we are at the rear of the 86 GT. This particular one has a black spoiler that comes up off the trunk, just, just enough to give it a real sporty, aggressive look, but it really is not overdone at all. And then we have these aggressive tail lights here, and then we have our Toyota badge, and we have a backup camera right there underneath the trunk and we have our tail light there and then we have our bottom diffuser lip and this is really a hard plastic and then we have this is really this triangle here is not functional it's a reflector but this is the uh, reverse lights and I'll show you and while we're back here we have our dual exhaust now let's listen to it All right, so now we're going to look at the key fob here. And it's a pretty standard key fob. And if you hold the trunk button, it'll pop open the trunk. All right, that opens up nicely. And it really extends quite a bit to give lots of entry room. But the mouth here really doesn't have a lot of room, the uh, entry room. So really, you couldn't get too many big boxes in here. Yet it's pretty. It has a pretty good space in here. Um, it's nice and carpeted here. It has a really nice soft carpet. Uh, it's just not a whole lot of room. It's a pretty standard sport trunk. Okay, so here we are on the passenger side. The 86 GT, you know, not a whole lot of complaints about this. Here's where my legs are. Yeah, they go over the seat a little bit, except that the seat buckets down so nicely that it, I honestly feel like I'm in the seat actually. Instead of just being on it, I feel inside the seat here. And I'll take you in here and you can see my headroom here. And it's actually a couple inches, but it's comfortable because I can lounge back. Looking at the door of the 86 GT, we have this nice suede feeling cloth up here on the armrest that's really nice and soft. And we have our hard plastic here with the door. Moving down, we have a very light and subtle carbon fiber look to the door lock trim. And then here we have a nice grip on the handle here with some aluminum, faux aluminum trim here as well. And then this is actually a hard arm trim here, whatever you call it. And then we have a very soft leather right here for the armrest with the white stitching and back down to that harder texturized plastic there. We have our cup holders right here and it's actually quite large. I have a huge bottle. It doesn't fit on it, honestly, but it's close just to kind of give you an idea that you can fit some pretty large cups 
right in there. And then we have our speaker right there. And we have that texturized kind of rubbery plastic right here. And then looking at the seat, we have more of that nice feeling cloth suede. I don't know if it's actually suede. I don't think it is. But it feels like it and it's nice and you have a little design right there that's nice and subtle. And then we have a leather on the sides of the seat. It's really nice and it's soft and you have your white stitching here. And then looking at the passenger side of the dash, you have the Toyota with the 86 badge and you have some more of that suede material, but it's a lot harder right here on the dash. You have this cool, almost exhaust looking uh, vent for the air. And then you have your dash right here and this is a nice rubbery texture. All right, so the 86 does have a back seat. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, yeah, um, the seat's not all the way back. Oh man, so this is like what I'd be like if I got in here. Um, my head's right up against the rear window. Uh, <laughs> there's a little speaker back here. It's really not the best, but uh, here it is. My knees are coming right out here, but a decent sized human being could get right here. I'm going to be absolutely miserable though. Now we are at the front of the 86 GT and look at how much emotion is just right in the front of that. I mean, look at that. It's like, I can't make that face, but it, it looks like a face. I mean, it looks like, I don't know. What do you think? Shark? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so anyways, we've got this nice open mouth grill right here in the front, and it does go through here to the radiator. And then we have a little bit of a grill spoiler, I guess you would call that. And then we have these sharp lines right here at the bottom. And we have our fog lights there on the side. And we have these LED projector headlights and they look so cool. You've got the projector beam right here and you've got your LED daytime running lights, little uh, bulbs right there and it looks just so cool. All right, so let's take a peek at that beautiful boxer engine. What a timeless and classic way to just open a hood. No struts, nothing. You just open it up and you've got your hood support right there. All right, so looking at the Boxer engine. It looks really good in here. And this is Toyota's, Su Toyota and Subaru's, Bo <laughs> Toyota and Subaru's Boxer engine. So that's kind of throwing me off because it says Toyota and Subaru right there, but it's actually a Subaru, Subaru's Boxer engine. Bo <laughs> Subaru made the Boxer engine. And so this is a 200 horsepower dual overhead cam, 16 valve engine, and it has dual variable valve timing. Uh, that D45 stands for the D45 direct import injection system. Rear wheel drive with a limited slip differential. Mission is a six speed sequential auto transmission with paddle shifters. Now we're on the driver's side. I'm gonna go ahead and step in and show you what it's like. not bad it's not perfect but it is pretty freaking good all right so my legs are 43 inches long my knees do go over the seat and then they're into the well so i can't get them all the way straight but very close and i could probably lean the seat back more and get a little bit of room there but then you start to compromise the drivability and the driving position so yeah i i like the seats the bolstering's great on the side and on the hips there here around the thighs. The thigh support is great. And you've got the nice suede cloth material that's super soft and the leather on the side with the bolsterings. It's cool. I mean, you sit you kind of sink into the uh your your butt sinks into the seat a little bit. So it's nice. And then I'll bring it inside. Not a lot of headroom but it's the roof does bulge. Like me, it's like, it's extra headroom. So 
I don't know if that was the functionality of it necessarily, but there's extra headroom right there. Paddle shifters right here, they're nice and sh sharp looking and edged right there, and they're they're nice. And you've got your steering wheel, it comes out a little bit right here, and your nice 86 badge right there in the middle. And you've got your steering wheel mounts controls. You have your cruise control right here, along with your windshield wipers. Then you have your automatic headlights right here. You have your trunk release right here. Our auto buttons and miles per hour or kilometers per hour uh, settings. There in the middle is that sweet big tachometer. Look at that. And then we have our speedometer right to the left of it. I love that layout. And then to the right you have this gauge right here. Just gives you some information there. And you've got the digital little picture of the 86 and then moving to the center you have your shifter right here and so because it's a, sequ a sequential paddle shifter you can actually put it into manual mode from the shifter and shift it up and down from here if your engine starts stop you have your buttons here to turn to control the ac and these are pretty cool these are really sporty little little buttons here and they just push down and just kind of gives it a sporty, cool little feeling. And then you have your wrench style knobs right here. And they they control the temperatures there as well. And you've got your modes. And it's just a really simple, clean layout. And I like it. You have your little 8-inch screen right here. And we have a sport mode here. We have a traction control off, snow mode, and a traction control off and track mode. Seats are that cloth suede material, but you do have heated seats on both sides. Holder right here, and that comes right on out for some extra storage there. And you have right there in the back, you have a center armrest for whatever, whoever you're going to get back there. Not sure who. All right, so I love Toyota's infotainment system. Oh man, it works so fast. I mean, it's just just a little bit slower than a phone and it's just hardly noticeable uh for infotainment systems as far as it goes it's really top notch it's got a nice view here nice nice screen e-brake right here here we have our dash with lots of peaks and valleys so we have the a little bit of a bulge here with a little bit of a valley dip right on the um, dash over the steering wheel column and we have leather stitching or stitching with the suede cloth material and it's nice and soft. We have our speakers and then our dash just peaks and valleys all over the place. And it looks just really cool. All right, so we have our key here. Here's our key fob again. And we're gonna go ahead and just set it right here and go ahead and get it started. And she's on, look at that digital gauge there how it just flows from the third circle right off into the middle it looks awesome something to note is that the steering wheel also does adjust with the lever at the bottom and it goes up down and in and then out again and it really improves the visibility of the gauges it's really nice oh i love the way this shifter it's almost like a like a manual shifter but it's automatic, it's, it's kind of weird, but it's cool. First of all, everything is really tight. The gas is tight here. The brakes are super tight, bro. I like the feel of this. All right, so this little baby is not even broken in yet, so I'm going to treat her like the queen that she is. Headroom isn't like ridiculous, but honestly, it's, it's enough. The bolstering is so tight on my waist. You can tell this thing is just ready to freaking rock and roll. Right away, getting on the highway here. Uh, the engine's still a little cold, but just getting on, you can you really can feel it being pretty pretty underpowered. I, everyone already kind of knows that. Everyone everyone's already complained about it a lot. Visibility so out the sides. Uh, out the side mirrors you can see the you can see the spoiler and it looks pretty freaking sick but you can see pretty good there's quite a bit of wind noise though i can hear wind noise out there I hear wind noise all passing around there you feel like 
you're in a sports car. Feel that tight suspension though, the firmness. Feel every little bump. Hear stuff in the road. Oh, a note about visibility. <coughs> no, it's not the Rona. I just got some spit in my throat. Visibility. Uh, visibility out the backs. Actually good. Out the sides here. You can see the bolt, the bulging hips out the sides are. You have a place to set your arm here and rest. It's just that you're kind of so low that it's almost not even something you can use comfortably. The pillars are in the way though. That cruise control and a red light just came on telling the car to shift while I'm in cruise control. Is that really what just happened? Because that's weird. So you can go into manual mode with the shifter down here and shift up and down just with the knob here with the shifter. Kind of weird. There's some weird stuff. Mixer engine sounds good, dude. Ha! Huh! I just passed my friend in his Miata. <laughs> I love the downshifting. I love these paddles. Oh, the boxer, yes. Didn't have to flex on me that hard, boxer engine. This car is so much fun. It doesn't have a ton of power. I'm barely giving it any throttle and it's just so much dang fun. I love the sound of the boxer engine. You can hear the intake. Yes. I'm obsessed with that freaking sound. First of all, I was kind of harsh on the ride right out the gate. It's, it's not bad. Like, it's cool, dude. I mean, it's kind of... It's a little bit harsh and firm. It's just kind of what you expect. You're buying a sports car that handles awesome. The boxer engines sound so good. Excuse me if boxer engines don't impress you. Excuse me if the horsepower isn't enough. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's a, it's miles better, miles better than my 350Z. If the 350Z had a back seat, then yeah, it might be different, but it doesn't. So accelerate a little bit, sport mode's on. It's so loud, freaking fun, dude. Been along here and used to the firmer suspension. It's not bone jarring, it's not bad. It's just a fun car. The brakes are tight. So what's fun about this car is you can just rev it up, you get to listen to that awesome sound, and it's just tight and it's firm and it goes, and you're not breaking the speed limit. You're not going too fast, and you're getting great gas mileage. Not that good when you're putting your foot down, but you're getting pretty good gas mileage, you know? And even in the city. So, it's cool. What a good car. This is a more reasonable, smarter sports car. You're not going to win a lot of races. <laughs> so what? You get to listen to this. I'm going to take it on a little bend here. Let's see how we do. Oh, okay, wow, it just, it doesn't want to get off the turn. It, it, it wants to glue, it wants to stay right on it. Just smooth acceleration here. Oh. Yeah, it's not fast by any means, it's fun. Fun can come in the smallest little bite-sized packages, and this is what the 86 is. Little bite-sized snack. 
a little bite-sized snack of fun. That's what this is. And Toyota does it so, Toyota and Subaru, do it so well. They do really good. I'm super comfortable just cruising on the highway because my back sinks into the seats bol seat bolstering and then my the, my bottom and everything goes into the seat nice. I'm comfor comfortable. It's not as much room as the other cars that I've been in. It's not as powerful as the ca other cars I've been in. Sure, but you know what? I'm just cruising at 80. It feels good. Just cruising. Yeah. All right, so is the 86 GT for tall drivers? Straight answer, straight to the point, yes. I'm impressed. So this was completely unexpected for me. So really much taller than me, you're probably going to have a hard time. I'm probably the cutoff for comfort. I am comfortable in this car, though. And it is for tall drivers. It's fun. It's it has. I mean, I mean, you're getting over 30 miles per gallon on the highway, uh, and you've got the great boxer engine sounds, and it handles really good. Yes, it's for tall people. Thank you so much, Fowler Toyota, for giving me this car to test drive and review. And thank you so much to my viewers for viewing this. And please subscribe. Comment below if you disagree with a bunch of the crap that I said today, then let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and have a great day.